For those of you who are interested in hearing what I have to say outside the topic of swimming, I, I have good news for you. I have two brand new YouTube channels up and running. They are called the JP Podcast and JP Podcast Clips. So if you're a fan of Joe Rogan or H3 Podcasts and you know, like their kind of humor and style and honesty, you might want to consider checking out my two brand new channels. The links are down below in the comment section for you to click on and for you to enjoy because uh, I know some of you are interested in seeing and hearing what I have to say outside of swimming. For you guys, to make you guys happy, check out those two links down below in the comment section. Click them down below and enjoy. Okay, so let's get back to this video topic. Today's swimming topic, warm versus cold swimming pools, which is better, what's the difference? And there is a huge difference that you probably are not aware of. My backstory is I've been swimming for a very long time and I've swam in all kinds of pools from like really, really warm pools to like freezing, freezing cold pools. And I can tell you there is a huge difference, not just in temperature, but the types of people that swim in these types of pools and I'll give you my take on which is better, but you probably already know, you've already voted actually, because uh, you can see the, the results here in the group. And by the way, if you're not a member of the group, join our group, the link is down below. I know most people, they prefer swimming in warm pools. Why? Because you know warm pools are a lot more comfortable. They're a lot easier to work with, especially if you're a beginner. If you're there to practice floats, to move around in the water, get familiar and oriented with you know, being in water for the first time, then yes, I definitely recommend that you practice in warm swimming pools. However, once you become more advanced like myself and you're there to just do the work, do your laps and nothing else, not to goof off, not to play around, not to splash, not to lounge, not to hang out with your friends like most tourists do at a swimming pool, then you might want to consider switching to cold swimming pools. And here's why. The reason why there are cold swimming pools is not by accident, okay? There's no such thing as accidents when it comes to swimming pools. Cold pools exist for a reason. And the reason is for results. Any pool that has cold water has a lot more serious clientele swimming there. So for example, university. If you go to a university pool, what do they have there? They have a competitive swimming team that represents the school. And what do they like swimming in? Cold water. Why? Because they got to do intense amount of laps back and forth. They got to focus. They got to train. And that cold water allows them to do that. Think of it. If you were running outside for a very long period of time, just, just giving it your all, what happens to your body? Your body starts to overheat and that heat needs to dissipate, okay? And the cold water allows for that body of yours that's overheating to cool down. And not just that, the cold water and the cold air allows you to <sighs> take in giant gulps of air comfortably without getting your throat dry, without you know messing up your circulatory system as you're swimming like hours and hours of laps. Now compare this to a warm swimming pool. What do you notice when you step foot in a, in a warm swimming pool? Well, first of all, the water's warm, but also the air is warm. And when the air is warm, you're taking giant gulps of that warm air into your throat. And what happens over time? <sighs> over time, I don't know about you, but my throat starts to crack up. It starts to get dry really easily, and it becomes really hard to breathe and continue my sessions like swimming back and forth continuously for such a long period of time. Obviously, when the, the body's overheating, the, the warm water doesn't help, okay? It just adds to the overheating. And then the whole body overheats and you start falling asleep, or I fall asleep, actually, when I start doing laps for long periods of time in warm water. I start to doze off. I start to lose focus or concentration in such a warm water setting. So if you're swimming laps, you definitely need to switch to cold swimming pools and most cold swimming pools are usually ones that host competitive swimming teams or like a, a school or university swim club swim team okay those are the serious boys okay those guys know what they're doing 
They're there to do the work, and they know for a fact they need to swim in environments that have cold air and cold water. For most everyday people, tourists and kids and families and people who want to just lounge around on vacation or on the weekends, warm swimming pools is their main go-to choice. Okay, it's good for the whole family. The babies can play in the water. The kids can play in the water. And mom and dad can play and enjoy, lounge around, goof off. But there's here's a the kicker. The warmer the water is, the more pee is going to occur. Think about it. If, if you ever saw a family that played or tried to play in a cold swimming pool, what's the first thing they do? They start complaining that it's cold and then they get out. That's it. <laughs> they go, oh, it's too cold. And then they get out and they complain and they leave like two, three star reviews. And by the way, that's how I find out which are the best swimming pools to swim at. I look at the reviews. If a mother or, a, or like a bunch of kids complain, oh, the water's too cold, that's the pool I'm going to swim at. Okay, that's a pro tip for you. The warmer the water is, the more pee there's going to be. Why? Because it's so simple. What happens when people are in warm water? Wherever you go around the world, what happens? People just stay in the water. They are sedentary. They don't have to move. They can just sit there. And what happens when you're sedentary? You release your bowels easily. Try to release your bowels in cold water. It's very hard because the body tightens up. It stiffens up. I usually avoid warm swimming pools for that reason because it's just, it's so disgusting. It's so dirty. If you don't believe me, which pool has the highest chlorine amount on average do you know it's not the swimming pool it's not the kiddie pool it's the hot tub <laughs> the hottest water has the most concentration of urine and foul stuff that people just leave behind bodily fluids because the water is so warm it makes them relax and then the body relaxes and then they do their thing and they think that nobody can will notice. It's true. You know, as a lifeguard, I had to had to test the chlorine amounts in each of these pools, and the hot tub had the highest amount of chlorine out of all of them, which is why like I don't hang out in hot tubs when there's lots of people around. If there's no one around, then yeah, I will dip myself in the hot tub. But uh, I know for a fact that you know that chlorine just really rips apart my swim gear. So. If you really want a hot environment, especially when it's winter time, I and the hot tubs are not a good option, then what is? Then I recommend that you hang out in the dry or the steam sauna. If you have one and and every pool has one these days, okay? Those are a lot safer on your skin because there's no chlorine, obviously. And uh, yeah, it, in those environments, yeah, no one will be caught peeing. <laughs> to sum up this video, yeah, if you're a beginner, if you're practicing your floats, your your glides, you know, just trying to get oriented with the water for the first time, then yeah, practice in a warm swimming pool. But know for a fact that warm swimming pools are just a haven for more tourists and like kids and families and people that you don't want to be swimming around, okay? And the chlorine is just insane in these pools because, you know, people get away with so much shit. <laughs> But if you go to a cold swimming pool, you'll notice that the clientele is a lot more sophisticated. They're a lot more adults. There are a lot more serious swimmers around you. What are we trying to build? We're trying to build a skill that we can apply in real life. And in real life, the ocean, the lake, the river, all of these environments are cold, cold, cold. <laughs> If you've ever swam in any of these places, you'll know that the water is freezing cold. So you might as well just get used to it. You know, get as close to simulation as possible by swimming in a cold swimming pool. Okay, so try both of them. I know for sure that you've been practicing in one, and that one is obviously the warm swimming pool. So I encourage you to try the other and you know, see what it's like, especially if you're yeah into lap swimming. Definitely, definitely recommend a cold swimming pool. So look for those pools online with the bad 
Google star ratings <laughs> by fan left by families. Oh, the water is too cold. Eh. Uh, that's all I have to say about this topic. Leave your comments down below what you think about warm versus cold swimming pools. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this YouTube channel, like this video, hit the bell, bing, <laughs> and I will talk to you next time. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>